Is your classifier good or bad? Let's talk about performance. So remember that we have two types of classification approaches. The harsh solution in which life is divided by yes or no. So our classifier is going to put everything into this uh, region or this one and the border is going to be sharp. Or we have the soft solution in which we're going to play with probabilities. But in either case, we need to talk about how good is our fit. So let's imagine that we have a binary problem in which we have some negatives and some positives. This could be, for instance, a COVID-19 test. And we want to check the validity of our classifier. So one thing that we can do is try to check if the number of true positives and how, how can we deal with true positives? Because we are training our model with the data. Remember that we are talking about supervised learning. So we can cal calculate the true positives, the false negatives, the true negatives, and the false positives. Of course, ideally, our classifier is so good that everything falls within the true positive and true negative. So we can count in this situation how many of them we have in this box, and we can create what they call the confusion matrix. And, and here we are plotting basically the predicted values versus the actual values. So the actual values are the interesting ones because they are the ones that we know and the predicted values tell us how good is our model. So as I was saying, the higher in the diagonal, the better, and the lower in the off diagonal, the better, because we want to reduce the false negatives and false positives. Let's, let's take an example. So imagine that we have a soft classifier like this, in which we are not dividing the world in above or below a threshold, but basically we're saying that we have a smooth line that give us the probability of being positive or being negative. Here the probability is almost zero for being positive, and here the probability is almost one of being positive, and somewhere in the middle is some more or less fuzzy. Okay, how can we create this table? So first we need to define a threshold, and a threshold tells us that in the end we want to say positive or negative, not given a probability. So if I draw this threshold here, where I'm going to say that every probability above this threshold is going to be taken as positive and everything below the threshold is going to be taken negative. Of course, ideally we should put this in 0.5 because we need 50% of the line above and below, but this is not what matters here. So what I'm saying now is that changing the threshold, we're going to change the shape of this table. So let's take this table and let's define some things that has to do with how good our classifier is. So the first metric is accuracy. Accuracy tells us the true positive plus true negatives divided by all the all the possibilities. Okay, of course, if we don't have any false positive and any false negative, then life is perfect and we have accuracy equals to one. Or in in other words, we have hundred percent accuracy. Another interesting metric is precision that tells us the true positives divided by true positives plus false positives. Okay, this precision is given us, giving us information about how good is our classifier computing positives. We have also sensitivity, or also called true positive rate, that tell us how the number of true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives. We also have sensitivity, sorry, specificity, and the false positive rate, which is one minus the specificity. Many of these uh, metrics are used in, in medicine, and probably if you heard about this COVID-19, fast test, probably probably you hear about how low the sensitivity or how high the specificity or th of those uh, tests are. Let's take an example. So imagine that we are have a data set that has to do with the quality of a customer's credit and we have this table. So we have fitted all the data and we are producing for a, for a given threshold, let's say 50% threshold, we're computing this this table. And now we can calculate different things. For instance, the accuracy is true positive plus true negative divided by all, all the numbers here. So we have 24 plus 130 divided by the sum of all. So this gives us 70% accuracy, and not bad. What about sensitivity? In this case, the number of true positives divided by true positives plus false negatives is 40%. And what about specificity? Here is 90%. Okay, why is that? Why this 40%? So if you take a look at the table, you can see that the, the true number of negatives is, well, it should be larger than 130 and the positive is around 24. So we have class imbalance. So this is not, not a very good data set in order to fit. Another possible explanation, and, and we should know more about the data set, is that maybe we don't have a strong predictor of, of, of the client's credit. Okay, Going back to COVID-19, 
for instance, this test should be, would be terrible if we want to stop the epidemic. Why? Because we are only detecting around 40% of the true positives. So many people that could be potentially infectious are would have the impression that they don't have uh, the, the infection. Okay. And the specificity is large, and this test would be great if we want somebody to go back to work. Why? Because the true, the, the, let's say, percentage of true negatives is 93%. So we are almost sure that if you give negative in this test, you can go to work because you're not contagious. Okay, so it depend, depending on the question, this could be good or bad. So what if we change the threshold? In principle, if we change the threshold, we change the table. And of course, we would change sensitivity and specificity. So there is one way to summarize all the possible uh, tables that we, you can create for different thresholds, and this is called the rock curve. So if you put the threshold at zero, you'd be in this part of the line. You put the threshold at one, you'd be in this part. And of course, if you put the threshold in 0.5, you'd be somewhere in the middle. Okay, I'm going to explain this rock curve in more detail using our, our example in another video. So let's skip that. And one way to measure the quality of our classifier is called the area under the curve. So take the rock curve and then compute this area. Of course, for a perfect classifier, we would have something like this. Uh, basically, this curve would be very tight into this axis and it would be almost horizontal. So the area under the curve should be 1. And if the area under the curve is 50%, uh, so basically if your rock curve is goes into the diagonal, that means that your classifier is doing things by random. So your classifier is the same as, as dropping a coin and taking head or tails. And that's all for today.